our viewers today we're going to be installing a high pressure sodium street light on the side of the house now I have some reservations about this installation because the only ones I can find that I have on hand right now are these uh, Utilitech glow and touch whatever the heck it is lights which I have never used before all right, like I have the Woods ones, which I've used for years. I know they're reliable. It's a good brand and whatnot. These, I just don't know. They're probably fine, but if it's junk and it keeps breaking or I got to go swap out the ballast or something, I'm not going to be happy because this one is high up. It's hard to reach. I would much rather have installed something that I know to be good up there, but I don't have any on hand. I might have some in the up in the attic or something, but... I don't know I'm pretty sure that I only bought enough to put on the deck and the, the front and that because putting one here on the side is a relatively new conception I wasn't thinking about that at the time so we'll see uh, we'll give it a shot and see what happens I'm gonna open this from the bottom because I like the graphics on these boxes now we're also going to experiment with a uh, mounting concept which if works then I should be able to put like a 115 or something big up there which is going to be the goal I think eventually but I want to start out with them all matching and then we'll, we'll go from there. So uh, I thought Utilitech was like a Lowe's brand. I don't know. These are still a mystery to me. bag of hardware here I wish I knew at the time when I started installing these that they were supposed to go on these poles I didn't know at the time because I never seen them because we don't really have them around here since I started working on these I've seen maybe two or three out and about in the wild but they're very very scarce around here so I just didn't know uh, and I was just screwing them directly to the house. Which, I mean, with these screws, it would imply you're supposed to do that, but I don't know. So I got, I got one of these, another one of these poles here, and we're going to use that. what I'm going to do is I bought these brackets and I'm going to use these brackets and this hardware to secure the pole and now what I have to figure out is how to connect the pole to the light because I never have installed it this way So I'm not going to use this because uh, the thing with this is that um, I just don't 100% trust it. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this. <coughs> I think that would be fine for something like this because it's not that heavy, but I want to have extra capacity. Plus this is going to be uh, over a window. 
Right, so with the one outside, if it falls, I mean, I'd be pretty mad about that, but it's not going to really cause a crisis. If this falls, and it falls into the window and breaks the windows in the living room, well, that's going to be a crisis. So, uh, it's got to be secure. So it looked like, uh, let's see. I guess it's very simple, which is nice. Yeah, it's very simple. Huh, how unusual. Yeah, see these, I mean, it, like the igniter is just kind of chilling in here. I mean, does it really matter? No, I don't think so. You know, it's probably fine. If it breaks, it breaks. I'll fix it. Whatever, I ain't worried about it. Uh, I need to go get some batteries for the drill. Now, what I want to do is get everything set up as much as possible here in the garage so that when I take it up on the ladder all I gotta do is just connect it to the box because I don't like working on ladders I don't like working on a roof so I want to do as much as I possibly can to set it up while I'm comfortable down here at the bench and then uh, we'll deal with what we got to deal with uh, on the ladder. Okay, so um, we're going to make the connection, I guess, inside the post. Mm -hmm. it's, it's enclosed. So this, it'll go like... One there and one there. It, and that should really be quite strong. I think. Anyways. Yeah, it's just sitting there like that. Okay. Easy enough. So. Let's see. We're going to want to have it. You know, I guess the connection probably should be made inside the fixture itself, maybe. Uh, so I want to have it. I'll cut it here. I'll leave extra if I gotta slice it when I'm up there I will. And I want to try to mount it as high up as possible. This stuff is kind of a pain to strip. Kind of got to do it in sections. Okay. So, let's make some connections here.
Okay. I'm going to guess that was an umbrella. Yep. I should have closed that up. I think this is, yeah, it's longer this way. I suppose this is probably an illegal move, but I don't know how else you would do it. Unless you're supposed to keep the connections inside here. I mean, there's other connections in here. I guess it should probably go in there. It's not a big deal. Let's just stick it up in here. But then it's going to be right next to the bulb, which I don't like. This is heat resistant wire, probably. No, it's going in the, um, it's going in here. And I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me that this is wrong and that may be correct. But I can't fathom what hazard this would possibly pose. It seems like the best way to do it. So this is what I'm going with. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. Oh well. It's wrong. <laughs> the uh, wire is supposed to pass through there. And actually, I guess this would be, this is probably where you put the, um, the terminal on, right? The, uh, what do you call that? Now, I just don't know if this wire can handle that much heat. This is, wire is... Uh, I don't know. It 
have a temperature on here? 600 volts. I guess we'll put it in there. I'm sure some will say, oh, that's still wrong. Well, maybe it is, and maybe they're correct. Yeah, it definitely makes sense that this would go like that. It makes good sense. I haven't done that on any of these. It just never occurred to me that that's the way it works. But it seems very obvious now. All right, that's how we'll do it. And the connections can reside up in the top there. I think this is the most correct way to do it. At least it seems that way to me. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't care. connections are residing inside a an enclosed strain released protected bonded housing I don't see what the issue could be Isn't there another piece? I thought there was another piece there. Must have been, was it just this thing that I'm thinking of? Yeah, I guess so.
All right, that looks good to me. So then this will sit on the house like this. Actually, that's pretty heavy. The, the mechanical advantage puts a lot of weight on there. So now let's just sample this and make sure that I understand the way these are going to grab on here before I go up there. So I think that this goes over that and then it would go like this I mean, it would go like that and then you have a washer, a lock washer and then the bolt and these should be Right about there. All right, that's pretty clear to me. It seems simple. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's finish putting the fixture together. The thing is a little bit crooked in there. We need the hardware. screws maybe yeah it's these screws I'm not sure why there's four screws when there's only three uh, holes. Whatever. These don't line up perfectly. This housing feels like aluminum foil, but they all do. That's just the way they are, at least the new ones anyways. The wood ones, the woods ones, are equally as flimsy.
this I think is the first part of these fixtures that I really don't like. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just a very tedious, cumbersome way to do this. And these little tiny screws that go on to these little tiny uh, washers to keep the shade on. It's just like, really? Couldn't it come up with something a bit easier to work with? I think the woods ones just have two like locking screws. You know, the, those keyhole screws. Yeah, this is a pain in the neck. I couldn't fathom trying to do that on top of a ladder with the fixture hanging up. four of these as well. I don't know if I just threw an extra in in case you drop it because it's so small and can't find it. It's assembled. This piece is the uh, daylight thing. And the daylight sensor is the touch and glow brand of sensor glow. Okay. So now it's time to go up uh, onto the side of the house and figure out how to get the existing fixture off, get the new mounting hardware up, and... Uh, Get the light itself up. Oh, the bulb. The post wrong bulb. Even the branding, the packaging on this bulb is pretty cool. Okay, it's in there. Okay. All right, let's move outside.
I think this is not going to be easy because everything is very rusted. And this has got some kind of hackery going on here. Plastic, and this is rotted metal. So we have nothing to work with here whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, we have nothing to work with here. Great. to do. I can't get at this from behind. There's no attic here in this part of the house. That stinks. I'll try a couple different screwdrivers, but I don't think any of them are going to work because it's just too rusted out. Oh, this one I can get. Kind of. Well, the screw just snapped, but it should be enough to uh, get this off now. If I have to just pry this down like this, I'll do it. Oh, it's full of water too, isn't that nice? No wonder it's all rusted. I think that we're going to have to replace this whole box. Obviously this is not good. Okay, well that was not foreseen in this project. Mm. 
these screws are pretty rusted through it too, but I can turn them. Okay. Oh, the bottom one might be a different story. No, I got it. box isn't even bonded. Wow. This, this is all rusted. One single dull moment around here. Not one. Oh, this is not 
wet. It's just unsightly, so that's fine. It can stay that way. I've got a new box, and I'm just going to make it an outlet because it'll be dual purpose and help during Christmas time. Not at all what I had planned to do. This is going to drag on much, much longer than anticipated. But sometimes that happens. Uh, I don't be watertight. This really is going to have to mount horizontally. Which means you're going to need the drill to get in there. No way I could do it like this. I have to go like this. That would be watertight that way. I think I can get through this without the drill. Let's see. Yeah, nope. I gotta go get the drill. If you think you can't see what you're seeing, I can't see anything either. broke. The tab broke right off. That's pretty abysmal.
That's a big okay then. So we'll try, I guess I'll try the top. I don't know why that would have transpired. That's kind of bizarre. generally went better. And quite frankly, I think that's sturdy enough. Should be watertight. Uh, broken piece in there. Get that out. And I'll drop it. Alright, I'm going to go with that. Okay.
I think you missed the last couple of seconds of me screwing the outlet on because the battery ran out. But ultimately the outlet is finished, the box is replaced, it's watertight, and it's good to go. Now we have to start working with this mug. So, um, since at this point I've really had enough of being up on the ladders, I'm going to uh, assemble this as much as possible down below here at the bench and then uh, we'll go back and finish it off now I'm not sure about these screws I don't know if they're going to be long enough so we'll have to see in comparison to these screws which grab pretty well they are about a quarter inch shorter so I think we're just going to go ahead and use these as long as the heads are big enough yeah the heads are big enough we'll just use these this way I have no doubt in my mind that it will uh, it'll work properly So the question now becomes, no, I guess it has, yeah, it's got to go like that because of the way the surface is. And why this needs to have plastic foam on it is beyond me. <laughs> the finish is abysmal anyway. It's like, what, what difference does it make? Oh boy. Never fails to amaze. Absolutely never. So I believe that we should have Let's see if I can get the rest of that plastic film off. Okay. We should have this. Go like that, and then on the other side, we should have a washer a lock washer and then the bolt itself All right, these are ready to mount. I'm going to say that they need to go
and about the width of the drill's battery, I think will be acceptable. Should have seen that coming. Not good, it's not grabbing anything. The other one's like that too. Good. There's nothing to grab on. I gotta get uh, wider screws, I guess. Great. Was not expecting that to be an issue. instead because these other ones are not right
seem is pretty good. Good. Gotta keep going though. Fine until the blood. Oh, I'm getting sick. This is not good. or something to tighten this up and I gotta do something with this seems pretty sturdy though
that's pretty solid. I like that. <sighs> I gotta get down from here. My person has had enough. But we're just about done. All I gotta do is plug this in. This wire got a bit chewed up. But uh, it is what it is. on it's working which is confusing because I'm pretty sure that the power should be off but whatever okay yeah I really thought that the power was off now I'm confused Looks awesome in the daytime. We'll get some shots of it once the sun sets. Okay, the sun is set. Let's turn this light on. I'll leave you out here and I gotta go back in the house to turn it on. It's taking a long time to get going.
There we go, now it's stirring up. Yeah, this is doing pretty good. This is definitely getting this area over here. It's a little bit brighter than it was before now. The brightness seems to be about the same as the woods fixtures, which I would expect. However, there is a harshness to this one. Like some part of the shade doesn't cover the bulb at the top. So that's a little bit unpleasant, but it is working, and this part of the yard is much brighter. So I would say this is, is ugh, this is a success. I'm not sure if that fixture will stay there forever, uh, but for now, that works. Big improvement in the lighting over here, for sure. It illuminates the living room quite a bit, which is interesting. You can clearly see everything out in the yard, which is nice. That's how I like it. And you can see the fixture from in here. 